when you wake up in the morning at around 4 a.m. all the way to 9 a.m., there is a steady flow of energy into your into your system because the liver knows you have to survive. So the liver now starts giving you this energy through the counter-regulatory hormones. And one of these counter-regulatory hormones is glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone that increases your blood levels of, in, uh, of, of glucose. Insulin reduces your blood levels of uh, glucose, but glucagon increases your blood levels of, uh, of glucose. So you produce glucagon, you produce adrenaline, the fight and flight, you produce cortisol, the stress hormone, and then you produce the growth hormone for purposes of growth. Okay, So these are the four counter-regulatory hormones that you produce in the morning. And their work is just to convert this glucose, this glycogen in the liver into glucose and pump it into the blood. If you define diabetes and then type 1 diabetes is kicked out of that definition because this is the reality. Let me just give you a brief introduction about this. Diabetes is not high blood sugars. It's not. High blood sugars, are, that's a symptom of diabetes. And this is where the confusion is coming in. And I think this is where actually the classification of diabetes came in. And we got it all wrong from that point. Now, we even say about 1 to 10% of the population are suffering from type 1 diabetes. But now we have never defined diabetes. So my question has always been, how on earth do we start classifying diabetes into type 1, type 2, type 3, and, and, and maybe gestational and, 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 and all other types of diabetes? Without even an appropriate definition, we still consider diabetes as hyperglycemia. Now, for those of you who are new here, hyperglycemia is basically high blood glucose levels. For example, if you eat a cake, a piece of cake right now, about 30 minutes from now, if you take your blood sugars, they'll be super high. Why? Because the cake has sugar, the cake has wheat, and we warn you against wheat. And wheat will always be absorbed as sugars. So sugars in, in medical terms are what we call the carbohydrates. So anytime you eat that carbohydrate, you will end up absorbing the sugars, either fructose from the fruits or honey, either glucose from any other carbohydrates that you're taking in, and all the processed foods, even the complex carbohydrates. At the end of it all, you'll absorb the glucose. The only difference is the rate at which you absorb that glucose. Because... For the fibers, you take some time before you break them down to release the glucose and you have a steady flow of glucose in your system. And that is what we want. We don't want that spike that will cause another spike in insulin and therefore you get into problems. So listen to this keenly. When you eat that carbohydrate, you get the sugars from it. You absorb the glucose specifically. So when you absorb the glucose, what happens is this glucose is intentionally designed to get into the cells so that it can give you energy or be stored in the liver as glycogen temporarily. So we store it temporarily as glycogen in the liver. And glycogen is basically glucose molecules attached to each other. Maybe two or three glucose molecules attached to each other. That is what is forming glycogen. So glycogen is still glucose. And why are we making this glycogen to store them in the liver and the muscles? We are doing that because we do not need, there is no urgent need for glucose in the cells as F for energy. So we are storing it temporarily. That any time you get a surprise, for example, there is a dog that is barking and you're so surprised, you have this instant energy to run away. So this is for the fight and flight system. So for example, there's a calamity, you need urgent energy to run, there's a fight, you need urgent energy to fight or to flee. Now you'll break down the glycogen in the liver to give you the glucose. And now that glucose will be used as ATP in the cells, in the muscle cells for you to run. So that is one. So one, we have the glucose that is directly taken up by the cells, converted to ATP, and that ATP is actually converted to, and that's the energy currency of the cell. So you utilize that glucose as ATP. For example, you are in the gym. But after you've exhausted blood glucose, what the body turns to is this glycogen in the liver and this glycogen in the muscles. So when you're, you're in the gym, you're lifting beyond 20 minutes to, to 30 minutes, you have exhausted glucose already. Now the body is turning to the liver to break down the temporary storage of glucose that is called the glycogen. Also, this glycogen is also stored in the muscles. So you break it down to get the instant glucose that you need for that workout. Up to that point, interesting. Very interesting. Now, if you're not doing any activity, if you've not consumed this glycogen, those of you who eat morning breakfast, even after eating the dinner yesterday, and you ate dinner at night, maybe at 8 you need about eight hours to break down that food so that you get the energy that you deserve. 
Now this is the point. You ate at eight. That energy you digested it, you assimilated, and then now you stored it temporarily as glycogen in the liver at over a period of eight hours when you're sleeping. When you wake up in the morning at around 4 a.m. all the way to 9 a.m., there is a steady flow of energy into your into your system because the liver knows you have to survive. So the liver now starts giving you this energy through the counter-regulatory hormones. And one of these counter-regulatory hormones is glucagon. Glucagon is the hormone that increases your blood levels of, in, uh, of, of glucose. Insulin reduces your blood levels of uh, glucose, but glucagon increases your blood levels of uh of glucose. So you produce glucagon, you produce adrenaline, the fight and flight, you produce cortisol, the stress hormone, and then you produce the growth hormone for purposes of growth. Okay? So these are the four counter-regulatory hormones that you produce in the morning, and their work is just to convert this glucose, this glycogen in the liver into glucose and pump it into the blood so that you get the energy that you require for that morning all the way to midday. And this is the reason why morning breakfast is one of the most useless meals of the day. At least now you have an idea. If you ate your dinner at 8, why would you go ahead and eat breakfast at 8 when already you have a lot of energy in the liver waiting to be pumped into the system to support your, your life until midday? So until midday, that's when your glucose level starts to go down and that's the time you need to bring in new food. But most of you eat at 8 in the morning. Again, at 10 in the office, you're eating. And governments are actually making this worse because they're the ones that are facilitating these lifestyles. So you have your tea at 10 plus mandazi. Yet you, you came out of your house when you've eaten tea and bread. Of course, with sugar and milk. All carbohydrates. So this is what, what is happening. So that energy that is stored temporarily in the liver is not f going to function anyway. It's not going to help you. So what the liver does, converts this glycogen into, into fats and sends it into the fat cells for storage. Now that's where you start adding your weight from. So for those of you who still think that fats are the ones that make you fat, now you already have an idea what is making you fat. Is the carbohydrates that you keep on eating, they are converted to glycogen or to glucose, and then that glucose is used as energy or stored as glycogen temporarily to support you. And then excess of it is now converted to fat, and you start adding your fat cells. Now apparently, your fat cells are the most difficult to burn to get energy, but they are the best energy sources. Fat is the best energy sources, given that one gram of uh, a carbohydrate can only give you four kilocalories of energy, as compared to the fat that will give you nine kilocalories of energy. Therefore, the food industry actually lied to you that carbohydrates are the energy-giving foods. They are not. Fats give you a lot of calories in terms of energy as compared to carbohydrates. Therefore, fats are the energy-giving foods. Now, you understand that basis. Next time we have a conversation and you tell me, you know, I eat carbohydrates because of energy, I can straight look you straight into the eye and ask you, have you watched any of my videos? Because if you have, you already know that we are running away from the food industry menace, that carbohydrates are energy-giving food. And in real sense, 90% of the products that they produce, the products that are on supermarket shelves, are actually carbohydrates. So for now, you already know that the only reason why they say that is because they want to market their products. And that's how you ended up becoming an addict to their sugars and their carbohydrates. And it's hard to come out of that addiction. So now you're converting glucose into fats and storing it as fats. Now, as those fats continue expanding, because they expand a lot, and on your abdomen, as they continue expanding and accommodating more fat, in, that is glucose. Actually, fat is just glucose in storage. So as those fat cells continue expanding, you continue being fat and accumulating the weight. Okay? Now, as this process continues happening, what you're doing is they will reach a point where you cannot force glucose into the fat cells anymore because you continuously eat. Every after three hours, you're eating. Every after three hours, you're eating. So you never give your gut time to digest and rest. What you're doing is you're just feeding it with energy. So you're always in a feeding state. When you're in a feeding state, your insulin levels are always high. Why? Because they are actually just converting that glucose into fats and storing it into the fat cells. So the number one role of insulin is not to lower blood sugars. No, it is actually to block any other source of energy from being burned. So when your insulin levels are always high, this is when you're feeding all the time. You will never burn any other form of energy. This is why diabetics can never burn any other form of energy. Because they are just relying on this glucose, storing glucose, storing glucose. So 
The storage of glucose and lowering of blood sugars is actually a secondary role of insulin. Once you block any other source of energy from being burnt or utilized, now the only source of energy that you know or your body knows is glucose. And now insulin is the one that is pumping this glucose from blood into the cells for either utilization or for storage. But most of us are always in the storage mode because you don't work out, you don't even take a walk, you're living a sedentary lifestyle, you're working from home. So there's nothing, you're, there's no activity literally. And by the way, when I'm saying no activity, I want you to understand that there will be no single day that you will burn as enough amount of energy as the one that you're taking in. There will be no single day. It is so hard for you to... This, this calories in and calories out uh, nonsense. It will be very hard for you to burn the calories that you're taking in. Come to think of it, in the morning, what are you taking? Tea that has sugar plus milk and then plus bread. That is all carbohydrates. At 10, you're doing the same thing. At 1, you're eating rice and beans, all carbohydrates. At 4, you're taking tea. And then when you're going home, you're taking your energy drink on, on your traffic jam in your car so that you don't doze off. And then when you reach home at 8, you're taking supper, which is ugali, a huge junk of ugali, plus very minimal vegetables and two pieces of meat and one egg, as your nutritionist recommended it, so that you can eat one egg every week. <laughs> so now every, like 98% of your plate is simply carbohydrates. When will you ever burn it? How much do you need to go to, the, how much running will you run to burn that, that carbohydrate? How much, will, how much running do you, will you do on that treadmill? How much lifting will you do so that you can burn this? This is the reason why those fat uh, uh, trainers, those people who go to the gym after eating, they hardly lose a kilo. They will come out with a pot belly because they are always storing. They are always storing. The insulin levels are always high. You go ahead and add on a protein shake, which is high in fructose and the glucose and the estrogens, the soy. So when will you ever burn all this? to give you energy so that you can lose weight. It's impossible. So don't ever rely on calories, calories in and calories out. That was a strategy by the soda industry to just make sure that you drink their soda because they tell you, don't worry about what you take in. As long as you're active, you can run on a treadmill, you're perfect. That is a lie. It will be very hard for you to burn even that 300 ml of soda from your system. That 22 gram of sugar that is present in that soda, you will hardly burn it. Because every time you do that, insulin levels are up. So you are storing, you are storing, you are storing. Our essence is we store temporarily so that we get to burn when need arises. But we never burn. We never fast. We hardly work out. And if we work out, it's for the cameras, for the ego. Okay, we don't do it for the right purposes. So you tell me, when will you ever burn that belly? That belly fat, when will you ever burn it? Exercise can never burn that. That's why the gym and the exercise plays only 15% of weight loss. But that is not the point. The point is this. So you're always storing. And as you store, there comes a time, you know of that neighbor who will always pass at your gate and say hi, hi. As they go, they say hi. As they come back, they say hi. They, and there comes a time when you're so bored, you cannot even answer their greetings anymore. This is the insulin. Every time insulin is high in your blood, every time insulin is high in your blood, and every time you're storing, you're storing, reaches a point where your storage is full and it cannot take in anymore. Now in your blood, insulin will always go up as glucose goes up. Because remember, your storage is full. So they, even if you produce insulin, you cannot pump glucose anywhere. Because your storage is full. If your refrigerator is full, even if you come in with new food, where are you going to put it? You have to empty the fridge so that you load the fridge with new food. This is happening to your fat cells. And at this moment in time, that's why we consider you as a person who is insulin resistant. You can, however much insulin you're producing, your cells cannot take it anymore. Because even if they take it, they open up the cells because insulin opens up the cells so that glucose flows from blood into the cells. But these cells are already full. So if you open it up, the only thing that will happen is like a spillage back into the blood. And that's how you start getting chronic hyperglycemia. And you see now, by the time you're getting chronic hyperglycemia, you've fed yourself all the way for all these years to get to diabetes. So you've always been pre-diabetes, pre-diabetic, sorry, because you've never burnt what you've been storing. And it takes about 7 to 30 years to be even, even 40 years to get to diabetes when you're pre-diabetic. So most of us are pre-diabetic and we just don't know. Because we still think health is the absence of a disease. No. Health is being in complete accordance with the environment. Complete accordance with the environment. So even if you lack a disease, doesn't mean you're healthy. 
But you ask people, are you, what are you eating? Listen to them tell you how healthy they eat. I eat a balanced diet. I eat healthy. I do brown ugali. I do brown bread. I'm like, oh my goodness. Brown? You think your body knows color? The body does not know color. You know, I eat fruits. At lunch hour, I don't eat. I just do fruit puddings. The body does not know you ate fruits. The body knows you took in fructose. Convert it to fats. The body knows you took in glucose. Convert it to fat because you're not burning it anywhere. So that is at least type 2 diabetes. So now, even though you're producing, the, the pancreas is producing insulin, there is no sugar that is being pumped from blood into the cells. So now the body thinks you're starving. And guess what happens? The pancreas keeps on producing insulin because now blood sugars are going up because they cannot go anywhere. So the, the pancreas thinks, hey, I need to do even more to give this guy insulin enough to pump this glucose into the cells. So as the pancreas produces insulin, your insulin in the system goes up. And as your insulin in the system goes up, your blood sugars are still going up. They cannot be controlled because they have to be taken somewhere. But that place where they are being taken to is already full. At least that one we can confirm your type 2 diabetic because if we carry out your blood sugar uh, test, we will see all the time it's elevated. If we carry out uh, a C-peptide test, we'll see you always producing high amounts of insulin. If we ask you what you've been eating, we can see it's all carbohydrates. So at that moment in time, we can easily confirm that this one is type 2 diabetes.